So many things. In this part we will learn yet another variant of the scheduling problem, namely scheduling of parallel but related machines. So parallel related machines. The sad thing is we still have M machines. So we have M machines. But uh, these machines each have a speed, possibly different, mm, positive real values. So each machine So that's called the machine J has a speed VJ. Usually we denote by V underline the vector of speeds V1, V2, and so on, Vm. So this is just part of the input, this is just a parameter of the input. So and in each VJ is a real number, positive real number. And again, on the input, the request sequences are just, uh, say, sigma 1, sigma 2, blah, 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 sigma n. And each sigma i is a job, also denoted as pi. So right now we only have one single processing cost, which is, let's say, an non-negative value, not necessarily an integer again. And then we have the output again. We just assign each job to a particular machine. So it's just an index 1 to m. And then on the load, that's different. The load of machine J is okay. So first we have to sum the processing cost of several jobs. Which jobs? Those jobs which were assigned to machine J. But in this variant, we have to divide the cost by the speed of the machine in question. Yeah. So basically a machine with a speed of 2 can process twice as many jobs uh, in the same amount of time as a machine having a speed of 1, a unit speed machine. And again we will have the make span. And this is just the usual stuff, it's just the maximum of the loads. So J is for one of them. So this guy is to be minimized. To be minimized. Now, of course, for this variant, we again have a version of a list algorithm, and I will show you as an example. Um, to make it access more accessible both the variant and the list algorithm so the list variant the variant of the list for this setting so for each machine for each j compute the load of J plus the current job's processing time divided by the speed of the message. So this is basically the new load of the machine and choose the minimal one. Choose the one minimizing this. And if we have ties, so if there are several machines the program taking the minimum value, so it's tie, you choose the smallest index. Say 
just to be deterministic. The smallest index amongst these, of course. So let's see an example. So an example. First, I give you the speeds. So the speeds is just one, two, three, which means that the first machine has a speed of one, the second machine has a speed of two, and the third machine has a speed of three. And of course, we have three machines. So right now, n is three. And I just give you the sigma. The input is just six, 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 say 12, say 14, or 24, whatever, 18, and 12. Now, how the list algorithm runs on this particular input, so I'm just indexing the rows by the machines. So on the first row, I will list the jobs assigned to the first machine, and the second row to the second machine, and so on. And here we also have the speeds, right? So the speeds happen to be the same. And I'm just writing here the loads. Initially, of course, no machine has any loads, so it's just zero, zero, zero. Now I'm trying, okay, so I'm just switching the color because for running algorithms, I usually use this one, okay? So I will process the first six, which means that I have to compute the current load plus this cost of the job divided by the machine's speed or divided by the other machine's speed or dividing by the other machine's speed. So this would be six, this would be three, and this would be two. So two is the minimal amongst these, which means that I will schedule the job six here. And the new load of the machine will be two, right? Because yeah, six divided by three is just two. Okay, now I'm just erasing this part. That's great. So right now I have a load of two for the third machine, and I'm not now scheduling the second entry of the input, which is again six. So it's either zero plus six divided by one or 0 plus divided by 2, this is 6 by the way, this is 3 by the way, and plus 6 divided by 3, because 3 is the speed of the third machine, this would be 4, which means that in this case, this guy will get the job, because this is the smallest value here. So 6 is scheduled there, and I'm trying to draw a rectangle of width 3, while the one below this guy was of width 2. So the current machine of the second machine, the current load of the second machine will be 3, and I'm just erasing the intermediate computations. Of course, if you already understand what this algorithm uh, minimizes, then it's well, not really needed to write down the things to minimize, but in this case we have a 6 divided by 1, a 6 divided by 2, because 2 is the speed of the machine, and divided by 3. So in this case I will get 6. In this case I would get uh, 3 plus 3, which is again 6. And here I will get 4, which means that in this case this guy, this machine, will get uh, minimum value so again it will get the next job as well so as you can see usually the fastest machine will get many jobs while the slowest machine will get well not so many jobs but that's fine because yes yeah, so because this is probably how the make spam gets minimized okay so right now this machine has a load of three four now the 12 arrives so for this, I 
have to just compute plus 12 divided by the speeds of the machines. So here I will get 12, which is probably too large. Not sure. For this, I get 3 plus uh, 6, which is 9. Yeah, that's better. But here I will get 8 because, well, 4 plus 12 divided by 3, which is also 4, I get a 4, which means that the 12 also gets scheduled here. Well, it's not so nice, but why not? So right now he will, will have a load of 8. And again, I'm just erasing these intermediate computations. So I'm always just computing the minima of the well future loads sort of okay now this 24 guy arrives so it's just plus 24 divided by 1 plus 24 divided by 2 plus 24 divided by 3 and in this case this guy will get 16 this guy will get 15 and this guy will get uh, 24 which means that in this case the second machine minimizes the load so it's 15 so the 24 will be placed here yeah. 24 okay and right now this machine has a load of 15 now that's quite large but this is how we roll okay so i'm just erasing this part of the board which contains the only intermediate computations and then I will get this job of 18, so it's just plus 18 divided by 1, which will be 18, okay. Now divided by 2 is 15 plus 9, which is 24, and that's larger, so, okay, plus 18 divided by 3 is just 14, which means that uh, this guy will be the winner of this round so we will have 18 yeah and the load of this guy is still a bit smaller than the load of the second guy okay so right now we can have a feeling that the first machine won't ever get a job because it's too slow but maybe this time so it's just 12 divided by 1 plus 12 divided by 2 plus 12 divided by um, 3 so it's just 12 fine and the other two is already larger than 12 so um, it, this time the machine one will get the job but to make this a bit more elaborated it's 21 and this guy is 18 so right now this guy is the winner and already has a load of 12 which is almost as large as the load of the others yeah so this is basically how the list algorithm operates in this setting of the in this variant of the list algorithm and again we will just um, derive some bounds so some lower bounds for the optimum values again lower bounds for the optimal value for the optimal make spam for the optimal make spam L star so for example here in the previous case there was this job cost of processing cost 24 even if it's processed on the fastest machine then it would have a cost of 8 at least because the fastest machine have a speed has a speed of 3 in this time so it's 24 divided by 3 it's at least 8 and this is always a lower bound so l star is first it's, it's just at least as large as let's take the maximum processing time and that's divided by the maximum speed usually i ranges over the jobs and j ranges over the machines okay and also if we have a make span of something like l star 
then we have this rectangle. Even if it's even if this rectangle is totally full, then the first machine would process a total amount of jobs like A star L star times V1. Yeah, so that's the that's the total sum of the numbers written in the in the rectangles here depicted here. And this job, the second guy, can process only jobs uh, having a total a total size of L star times V2 and so on. And if we sum these things, then we get the this L star is so it's L star times V1 plus plus Vm. That's just the sum of these guys. This is smaller than or equal to uh, well this is larger than that is as large as the sum of the total uh, total amount of jobs because in the rectangle on the left hand side all the jobs should be processed which means that L star is at least as large as the sum of the cost of the jobs divided by the sum of the speeds of the machines so these are the two bounds we have this is quite similar than those bounds we had because there is a bound derived from the largest job from the single one largest job and of course there is an other lower bound which is just based on the total cost of all the jobs now for this variant of the of the scaling problem we won't have that um, precise bounds for the competitive ratio of the list algorithm. But uh, let's try this. So there is a statement which reads as um, the list algorithm for this case, so for the case of related parallel machines is theta log n which basically means that it say it's larger than say two times log n and it's smaller than say four times log n or something like that so there are two constants uh, which we can multiply this log n bit and um, but we won't be that precise so we won't say that it's exactly two times log n plus something competitive but it's just something somewhere um, in the ballpark um, of log m somewhere so for this we will have a lower bound For this, we will have a bad input again. And for an upper bound, we have this need to study all possible sigmas and just derive that for each possible sigma this uh, ratio the competitive ratio is below something like four times log n now let's start with this bad input part now again we have a list algorithm and usually a list algorithm behaves badly if large jobs arrive at the end of the input sequence but now we have to well we have to um, scale also the speeds of the machines to get something which is not too competitive but it's it will be logan something like that. So now I have to describe 
for bedding, but also the speeds of the machines. So we have, we will have, say, we will have a parameter k. One machine of speed 2 to the k. Okay. And we have two machines. Of speed two to the k minus one, and we will have okay. So this is constant. So um, this will be the fastest machine, the guy with the speed to the k, and we will have two machines for half of the speed of the first one. But from that point on, we will always multiply the number of machines by 4 and we will always take uh, the speeds to be the half of the previous speed. So we will have 8 machines of speed 2 to the k minus 2. Okay, and then we will have. 32 machines of speed 2 to the k times 3, k minus 3, and then we will have 4 times 32, which is 128 machines of speed 2 to the k minus 4, and so on. And finally, we will have a number of machines of speed well, 2 to the 0. I'm not sure I will be able to compute this uh, right now formally, but it doesn't really matter, so it's just that uh, the zero is one, of course. So in each level, we just have the speed and multiply the number of these machines by four. Okay, and then the input is the same. So let's say if M say um, um, D denotes the number of machines having speed 2 to the k the number of machines number of machines of speed 2 to the t and then we will have as, as the input sigma zero is m zero jobs of size one, then m one jobs of size two, and then m two jobs of size four, and so on. And at the end, we will have m k jobs of size two to the k. Mk is one because we have one exactly one machine, exactly one machine of speed two to the k. Now I say that on this particular input, the least algorithm behaves badly because, of course, uh, so I will just um, write this down here. So, for example, if k is three, then I will have one machine of speed a. Two machines of speed four, two times, so I just get eight machines of speed two, right? And then I will get 32 machines of speed one. I'm not writing each of them in detail. And this is also the input but for an optimal solution. Okay, so I will just get for the optimal solution. So for the optimal solution, I will just have to load these machines by one job each of them. So for an optimal schedule, I'm just pushing each job to a machine whose speed is the same as the size of the job. Yeah, that's why I have M0 jobs of size 230 m1 jobs of size 231 because here each machine will have a load of one 
this this machine has a load of one because the speed is eight and the total well size of the jobs scheduled to this machine is also eight this machine also have a load of one this machine also have a load of one and so on so for the optimal cost is one and we will see that the risk algorithm will um, will um, schedule the jobs to these machines for around k for around for k yeah, the maximum of k now how will this work so for understand how it works so for this bad input we will have first a large number of jobs of size one okay so we will have 32 jobs of size one in this particular example one case that is more three so for the first job of um, okay so let's let just see how the list algorithm operates operates so the first job of cost one will be processed by the fastest machine right so it's just one the load of this machine will be one over eight at this point then arrives one another one other job of size one and the load of this machine would be then one over eight plus one over eight which is one over four and this machine also would have a load of one over four and this guy also would have a load of one over four this guy would have a load of one over two which is larger so again this is minimized by this guy okay then another job of size one arrives which means that this machine the first machine already has a load of one over four plus one over eight it's three over eight now for the second machine the cost would be one over four so this is smaller and actually this could be the minimal so this third job of unit size unit cost would be scheduled here you can check the details and I strongly advise you to just um, simulate this and just to get a grasp on the algorithm that the third, fourth machine of unit cost will be scheduled here and then next will be placed here and the next one will be placed here the next one will be placed here the next one will be placed here yeah. All right now this job will this machine will have a load of one half one half and one half and the others are empty but now there are also other jobs of size one and they will fill these other machines to a load of one half and there is eight these one two three four five six eight nine eight, 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 eight okay but then again what will happen is that the next couple of jobs and i'm just erasing this part the next couple of jobs will be scheduled over there and it happens always all the time exactly this way so one speed will be fooled in two columns right there are two columns of ones right now uh, in these two rows corresponding to the uh, machines of speed 4 and if these are filled both columns are filled then and only then will the algorithm start to fill the next speeds okay yeah, that's great but now if you just compute the number of these ones then we have one two three four five six seven eight on the first machine and one two three four five six seven eight on the second two machines so that's already 16 and one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight now uh, okay so it's it's uh, 32 unit jobs of size one right one two three four five six seven eight 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 one two three four and they haven't even used these machines they are empty because they are so slow and now the remaining part of the input is 
and one drops of size 2 which means that there are 8 drops of size 2 I think you can guess what happens here this will be placed there because the load of this machine will would be then uh, 1 because it's already loaded to 1 right now each of these machines have a load of 1 and right now 1 plus 2 over 8 beats 1 plus uh, 2 over 4 yeah of course and uh, these guys won't get filled because they would get 0 plus 2 which is larger than 1 plus 2 over 8 so this guy will again uh, be the machine attaining the minimum load and then again past repeats we will have 2 2 2 and 2 okay this is the speed border and right now we will get this 2 and 2 and 2 and 2 there and should be one more drop of size 2 arrive then it would get placed here but we don't have that many drops of size 2 because 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 we are already out so after processing all the jobs of size 2 we are at this state and now two jobs of size 4 arrive and these two, two jobs will be placed here and there you can verify this with me if you wish but then the, the machines of speed 4 won't get used again and then we will get the last job of size 8 here and it always happens like this so the first machine the fastest machine will get quite a large number of, of, of um, jobs and the other machines will get some smaller amount but in general if we have for fixed k for some k we will have so this is of speed to the k this is of the size k minus one this is of size k to two and so on and in the last part which is the first part um, there were jobs of size two to, to the zero which is one so there are basically from zero to k we will have k plus one load because each of these clusters will get a load of one for the first machine so these are eight unit cost jobs that's one this is four jobs of size two that's also one for this machine of speed eight these guys are two machines of speed four which is again one on the machine of speed eight and this guy here takes also one more time so we will have the cost of the list algorithm is k plus one where the optimum was one but um, so, but what is this k so if uh, so we want to use the number of machines as a parameter so what is k in the terms of m so what is k in terms of m well m the number of machines is just uh, it's just like m k plus m k minus one plus m k minus two plus plus m zero because we have m zero number of machines of speed two three zero and we have m one machines of speed two three one and so on and so on and we had m k machines of speed to the k so the total number of machines is just the sum of these numbers the number of machines having some fixed speed now mk is 1 and mk plus k minus 1 is 2 and we have 
from that point on 8 and uh, 32 and 128 and so on <coughs> so if you just uh, put this in another motion so we will have 2 times 4 to 0 say plus 2 times 4 to 1 plus 2 times 4 to the 2 remember we are always multiplying by 4 the number of these things plus 2 times 4 to the third and so on plus 2 times 4 now I should just uh, make the correct uh, power so here for k minus 1 I had a 0 for k minus 2 I had 1 which means that this will be k minus 1 yeah that's right and this is just sum of a geometric series multiplied by 2 so the sum of 4 to the 0 plus 4 to the 1 plus 4 to the uh, second and so on plus 4 to the k minus 1 is simply 4 to the k minus 1 divided by 4 minus 1 this is just the sum of a geometric progression so right now we will have something which is just 1 plus say 2 third times 4 to the k minus 1 okay and this is m so this means that um, m minus 1 times 3 2 you know plus 1 is 4 to the k and I'm just taking the logarithm so it's just the logarithm of say 3 over 2 and minus 1 plus 1 is um, just say 2 k's and finally I can if I wish I can just say that k is log so it's just k over 2 m minus 1 plus 1 whatever divided by k and this because the algorithm was on this particular input the algorithm was k plus 1 divided by 1 competitive on this particular input then we will have the least algorithm is this guy plus one competitive or even worse because it's not guaranteed that this particular input is the worst possible input for this algorithm but uh, of course instead of these complicated ex expressions we can say that if you just remember that what it means that is at least somewhere around log m competitive because the leading term of this expression is just a log m so it's something like log m competitive it's not a constant and it's not m competitive but it's log m competitive or around that ballpark okay so we already know that the least algorithm is not a constant competitive algorithm for this particular setting but um, to prove that it's well it can get much worse but it's uh, say something at four times log m competitive we will prove that as well so we will prove the power bound for the competitiveness of this algorithm as well in the next part of this video till then bye bye